Hello again everyone and welcome to the Cognautics channel. Today we're going to be covering information security. This is a sizable topic so I've split the content into four easily digestible videos. This first video will cover the main principles around keeping information secure. Video two will consider the key risks or threats to maintaining the integrity of data and explain how data breaches take place. In the third video, I'll discuss two case studies that highlight different types of breaches and examine the impact on individuals and organizations. The fourth and final video describes the methodologies that companies can adopt to keep their sensitive data secure. So let's begin by looking at the principles of information security and ask the question, what does good information security look like? There's a sense when considering how information should be treated that the key principles involve looking after the information, making sure that those who need it can access it, that those who don't need it can't access it, and also that the information is accurate and appropriate for the use that it was collected in the first place. Let's get into a bit more detail by dividing these principles into three areas, confidentiality, integrity and availability. Let's look at confidentiality. This means that the information should only be accessible to those who need it or are given authorization to access it. We'll come later to see how this measure may be achieved, but as a fundamental principle, data should only be accessible to those who are required to access it. The corollary, of course, is that those who are not authorized to access the data should be prevented from doing so. The second principle is that of maintaining the integrity of data. Another way of defining integrity of data is the trustworthiness or accuracy of the data. And this helps us to understand what this principle really covers. The notion of information integrity points back to the sorts of principles that you find in the GDPR. Namely, that information has to be maintained, or to use an overused word in today's lexicon, that data should be curated or looked after so that it is up to date, accurate, relevant, complete, and fit for the purpose for which it was collected. That list, by the way, needs to be committed to memory. The third principle of information security refers to the information always being available to the individuals, groups, or processes that need it. Processes, you may ask? While we talk about humans requiring data or information, it may well be that the data is required by other systems, comprising of software and hardware, and may not involve human intervention at all. However, the principle of the data still needing to be available is equally valid. As an adjunct to this point, remember that individuals requiring access to the data may well be those who supplied the data in the first place, rather than third parties. You'll often hear on the news about freedom of information requests, whereby people have activated their legal right to access the data that's held about them, or accessing data that's being made available to them under the Act. Statistics on policing matters often fall into this category. When you're planning for longer examination questions, remember that these principles can be a really useful way of structuring an essay and allows you to split an eight or 10 mark question into two or three smaller parts. You should make a list of key words to use in your answers and ensure that you understand what they mean in relation to information security. So words such as confidentiality, integrity, availability, when you discuss data, make sure that you can use these terms, accuracy, relevance, completeness, and fit for purpose. Now, don't forget that in addition to answering these questions in an exam, you're aiming to paint a picture that you are knowledgeable in the area that you have been studying. And this includes being able to use key terms, key terminology in an appropriate manner. When examiners are making a judgment on your work, and deciding which band they should place your answer in, demonstrating a forensic understanding of key terms goes a long way. Although clearly you need to actually answer the question at hand. I hope you found this video useful. Please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell if you want to be the first to see new content.
Bye-bye.